Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be talking about a ton of new cream blushes, liquid blushes, powder bronzers, and cream bronzers. The only ones I didn't get my hands on are the new Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm blushes. I just didn't see a shade that would be a good fit for me, and I never want to waste money and buy something that I don't think I'll totally love. So I have heard that it's really good though. And then also, Say launched new shades of the Say Sun Melt Bronzer. If you want a review on that, I'll link it on the screen above. I did a review when they first launched, but now they've added more shades, including including a fair light shade, which I'm so excited about because the light shade was too dark and too orange for me. So stay tuned for that review. I just purchased it today. So today we're gonna to be talking about Tower 28, Jones Road, Charlotte Tilbury, Cool Feed, Gen C, and M Cosmetics. Also for any of you music lovers, I'm currently doing a song of the day playlist on Spotify and I'll link it on the screen above and also in the description box. I post a song on my Instagram stories every day and then I add it to my playlist so you can listen along if you're interested in new music. And lastly, if you're new here, I'm Kate and I tend to really enjoy looking at products through a more critical lens in this realm of influencing where it's all bye 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 or like you need this I try to kind of do the opposite and I'd rather give you reason to not buy something rather than give you reason to buy it so if that sounds good I hope you'll subscribe and let's get into the reviews okay first we're going to talk about the bronzers and I'm going to start with the one that I have the most opinions on and it's the new tower 28 sculptino I have the shade broad it's spelled b-r-o-a-d and you would think that it's broad but they named them after la museums and so this one's after the Broad Museum. And Tower 28 says that this is foolproof, it's super blendable, and they specifically formulated this with neutral undertones, aka no orange hue or gray cast, so you can't mess it up. Really interesting choice from Tower 28 here. So the Sculptino is $20 and you can get it at Sephora. There are four shades and they said that they created it with neutral undertones because they wanted a contour product that would be more skin-like. And they ended up kind of doubling down on that messaging after some pushback that the shades were way too warm. And I'll get to that a little bit later on, but first I'll show you the application on me. And as you can see in the application footage, it definitely is not a sculpting product. On my fair, cool skin, it just comes across way too yellow peachy. And like I said, it's really almost too warm for me to be a bronzer. But formula-wise, I think it's really beautiful. I do notice a little bit of a difference between this formula and the Bronzinos, as well as the Beach Please cream blushes. This to me feels less sticky and it looks less dewy on the skin, but not by much. It's a subtle difference, but it is there. Personally, I didn't like the Bronzinos or the Beach Please products. They really just kind of slid right off my face. They made my skin look really dewy. But if you're new here, my face like totally eats cream blush. I put it on and then 10 minutes it's gone. So that's not really a unique experience for me. But I was pleasantly surprised by this formula. I was glad that they didn't make it quite as dewy. It is blendable like they say, and I think it makes a really nice bronzer. I'm just dumbfounded by the marketing for this. I don't understand how they're calling this a sculpting product. Let me try to insert a clip or at least a picture of what they posted on Instagram. So basically one of their product developers clearly saw a lot of feedback from both consumers and influencers that these colors were way too warm to be a contour product. So they created this video showing why they created the Sculptino with the specific colors in mind that they say are very neutral. Their theory is that a more neutral color will look more natural on the skin. And so the product developer did this demo where she showed the traditional cream contour with a more cool undertone on one side of her face and she showed the Sculptino on the other side. What's really interesting to me is if you put in a picture of the Sculptino side is it doesn't look good at all. I mean, it's a bronzer and she put it as a bronzer placement. She put it, I think, right here, which is personally where I put bronzer. So it's very strange to me that they're calling this a contour product. Now, I'm not a makeup artist, so I don't wanna be making big claims about the way makeup should be. And at the end of the day, makeup has no rules. I just think that it's very interesting. They could have you know, marketed this as a cream bronzer, and I think everyone would have been stoked. You know, I would have given them feedback that I would have liked to see some more you know, real neutral undertones here because I still think this is very warm. But you know, their range of cream bronzers, the Bronzinos has a ton of shimmer in it, and that wasn't really for me. So I feel like people would have been really excited to see a matte cream bronzer from them. So I just think that the marketing and then doubling down on that marketing has been a very interesting approach. And ultimately I do think it's gonna hurt the brand. So let me know what you think. Do you think this is a sculpting product? What do you think about the marketing and the messaging of it? What do you think about the video that the product developer created? Very, very interesting and very puzzling. And one last note, because this is a kind of dewier, more 
balmy formula. I did have to powder on top of it. After an hour, I noticed my skin looked very kind of wet looking. So if you have skin that kind of tends to get a little bit oily when you're wearing makeup, you'll probably want to powder this. Next up, we have the new Jones Road, the bronzer in the shade Dusty Rose. And this is a rose shade that has a little bit of warmth to it and also a little bit of a cool tone quality to it. I don't know how it can be cool and warm at the same time. It's just like, pfft way beyond my brain's comprehension of color theory, but this is something I can use as a blush and I can use it as a bronzer as long as I'm going for more of like a true burnt look on my skin and I'm wearing it today. So the Jones Road bronzer comes in seven shades and it's $35 and the website says, it's a silky powder that adds instant warmth to the skin. It's sheer and buildable and can be used to give skin a natural tint or for color correction. Available in seven shades, developed to work across a wide range of skin tones and types. Totally agree with all the claims about this. It's very silky. It's just, it's one of the smoothest, finest powders I've ever touched. It's so beautiful. And I'm wearing it today, so if you thought the color seemed a little weird and could only be used as a blush, I have it all over my forehead and I have it on my cheeks. Personally, for me, this is the way that my skin looks when I'm sunburned or, you know, I'm super pale. My skin doesn't tan very easily. And so this is the perfect shade to actually mimic what the sun looks like on my skin. I've been waiting for someone to launch the shade for a while. I do know that I think Bobbi Brown had Antigua or something like that. That was a very similar shade back in the day. People have let me know, but I hadn't seen that. So I was pumped to see this one in Dusty Rose. I also really enjoy the brush that came with it. It's super soft. It's the perfect size to just hit my cheekbones and my forehead. Really, really beautiful. Not necessary though. You can definitely buy cheaper brushes that are just as effective, but if you were interested in it, I do give it my stamp of approval. I'm just really excited about this. I, I haven't been able to stop wearing it. I think it is incredibly beautiful. I'm not sure about the other tones. I haven't seen a ton of reviews of the other shades. Honestly, I've just seen a ton of people buying Dusty Rose, and also I enjoy wearing this as a blush. There's like some kind of contour quality in here that if I build it up too much as a blush, it can look a little bit bruisey, so I actually do prefer it as a bronzer. I just don't think it'll be a bronzer if you have darker skin than I have or if you have warmer skin than I have. But for people like me with cool undertones, this is a serious godsend and it is something that I've been wanting for a really long time. Next, let's move on to the blush I'm wearing today. Today I'm wearing the new Kulfi Mendy Moment blushes in the shade Sandalwood Swirls. These are long lasting cream blushes with a radiant finish. There's like a little bit of a pearl running through them, but they do set down to be completely matte on the skin. They're $28 at Sephora and they come in five shades. Like I said in the beginning of the video, my favorite face eats cream blush. I put it on there, the next second it is gone. It has just been my universal experience, which is why I tend to be a powder girl. Not with these. These are crazy long lasting. They're so good. I only applied a tiny bit of um, sandalwood swirls today and I'll drop the application clip in right now so you can see this is just a very, very light layer of sandalwood swirls. I knew my eye makeup was gonna be a little bit heavier so I wanted my blush to be more subtle. And sandalwood swirls is this gorgeous kind of toasted mauve. It has a beautiful amount of warmth to it, but there's also this kind of mauviness to me that makes it a lot more skin-like. I just think it's one of the best formulas and one of the best colors I have ever seen. And I'll also drop in another clip here of me applying it a little bit more liberally so you can see really what the color looks like true to life. As you can see, they're so incredibly pigmented, but they blend like a dream and then they set down. So I would probably put a dot on the back of your hand and you don't even need more than that. Apply a little bit to your face, but I find that they give you enough time to work with before setting down that if you over apply, you have time to correct it. I think it's a really, really wonderful, thoughtful formula. I also have the shade pink Promise, which is this stunning, bright, warm pink that is just going to be my go-to for the spring and summertime. I can't wait to wear this with a matching lip, a little bit of like bronze skin and kind of like a gold glittery eye. Oh, that's the vibe for me for summertime. And lastly, we have the shade Blessed Berry, which looked very intimidatingly purple on the back of my hand, but it really does warm up on the skin and it looks like this punch of a beautiful bright berry, perfect for fall and winter months. And even though it's a more intimidating, less traditional traditionally wearable color for me. I still think it looks really beautiful on the skin and it is something that I've been reaching for a lot. I can say with full confidence now after testing this for a few weeks that this is my favorite blush formula that I've ever tried. It's the most long lasting, it's the most beautifully blendable. And something I really love about it is these have a thick cream texture. And what I like is that versus a product that's more liquidy, 
Those products kind of just blend right out or they kind of slide all around the face. A thick cream is just gonna stay right where you put it. And so it makes it for me a lot more easy to use because you get more control. I'm just blown away by the lasting time. This did not come off my face until I removed it. I wore it for 10 hours and the color was still there. For me, that is a goddamn miracle. So I just, I, I can't stop talking about these. I think they're incredible. On the flip side, I'm gonna talk about a similar product that comes in similar packaging that really did not work for me despite my best efforts. So these are the Gen C Clean Sheen Cheek and Lip Color. They come in five shades and they're $20. And the website says, these are a buildable, blendable color for both cheeks and lips. It's easy to apply and can do everything from a sheer wash of color to a real pop of color. Either way, it gives a natural glowing flush to your complexion when used on cheeks and a light tint of color on the lips. They also say they're vegan and cruelty free and they also say, please note the tube for this product is small because we aim to keep packaging to a minimum for sustainability reasons. However, the fill weight, AKA the amount of product in the tube is on par with similar products. I could not get these to work. I've tried everything. I've tried these several days in a row with several different application methods. Let's start with the shade Dragon Fruit because that one is more fresh on my mind. This is very similar to the color of the Coolfee Blush and Pinky Promise. It's this bright, beautiful, warm pink, like grapefruity pink that I love so much. You know, the color when it's on the back of my hand looks so vibrant and looks like it's just gonna be super pigmented. And then when I apply it to my face, it just slides right off. It feels almost like a cross between a gel and an oil. It's just so incredibly slippery that it just blends the pigment right away, but I'm left with like an oily feeling cheek. It's just not what I want for my makeup. And what happens when the pigment blends away is it also blends away my foundation. So I think you can see in the application clip, it's just, it's hard to build. It ends up looking really patchy and you can see that all of a sudden my kind of hyperpigmentation and my breakout started coming through my makeup as I was blending this away. So I was very disappointed in this. I tried it with my fingers, with a brush, with a sponge. I tried it with just no foundation and just a tiny bit of concealer on and no matter what, I just couldn't get it to work. And when I posted about these on Instagram and I shared that they really weren't working out for me, I got a lot of DMs from people saying the same thing. They couldn't get them to work. They were too patchy, blah, blah, blah. So I'm glad I'm not the only one, but I've seen so many people totally raving about these. I was really surprised by my experience. I also have the shade Coconut, which is a beautiful, rich brown shade. I absolutely love this color. On the skin, it looks a little bit orangey, so it's very much a warm brown, and I think it would be beautiful. Some people could use it as a bronzer. A lot of people could use it as a blush color. Just a very versatile shade. Unfortunately, the same thing happened here, although I do find Coconut had more pigment, so I did notice that I was able to kind of hold on to the color a little bit more, but the same thing happened. It was still kind of slippery, oily, slid around my face, you know, took away my foundation. I just ultimately really didn't feel like it looked flattering on my skin, so that was a bummer. And then the last color they sent me is Plum, which is a beautiful, rich, deep berry shade, and I love this color, but with this one, it was so pigmented, I definitely had a little bit of an issue getting it to not look patchy. It's just a very, very tricky formula, even though they say it's easy to use. I think sometimes when formulas are too liquidy and too slippery, it just ends up being a patchy mess. And so for me, as someone who also tends to get a little bit oily on the cheeks and throughout the T-zone, it's just a miss for me. I gotta be honest, Gen C was super nice and they sent me a bunch of products and I haven't fallen in love with a single one of them. I was gonna do a whole Gen C brand review. I don't wanna be super negative though, you know? Like I wanna share my honest thoughts and my experiences with the products, but I feel really bad that I didn't like anything. The lip gloss and the lipsticks are nice, but still like they weren't really my jam and so, I feel bad, but let me know if you still wanna see that review because ultimately my goal is always to be the most helpful to you as I can. Two more products. Next up, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands. I did a full dedicated review on this and I'll link it on the screen above where you can see everything applied in much more detail, but I'll just give you some quick thoughts on this while you're here. The Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands are $42 and they come in four shades. My favorite one, which is Pillow Talk, is only available on the Charlotte Tilbury website, but you can get the three other shades on Sephora. The website says, honestly, I don't really know what the hell the website says because the way that they write this on the website, it's like regular text and then it's like all caps, like yelling at you, darlings, world famous, one dot wonder. And it's like, I can't even read what they're trying to say. It's huge pet peeve of mine of the Charlotte Tilbury branding in general. But anyways, they say the cushion applicator easily applies cheeks for a smoothing effect 
It has a soft focus blush look. Wow, they honestly make the website just way too hard to read. So in my video where I did a full review on this, I compared the price per ounce to the Rare Beauty blushes. So even though people are like all up in arms that these are $42 for something that really doesn't look like it should be $42, these are almost twice the amount of product in the Rare Beauty liquid blushes, which are 23. Personally, I mean, I think most of us would rather have a smaller sized product for half the price, but it really just depends on your preferences. I did want to add a little bit of context that sure these are $42, but they have way more product in them. And also I had some people point out that these looked like they were all the way used up, even though I had just opened them for the first time on camera. Brands have to underfill products that are in this kind of packaging so that they don't explode. So basically you need to have like three quarters of your bottle be air. And there's actually a really good post I can share with you. I forget who posted the video, but I'll leave it linked on the screen above. Basically they explain why packaging like this is so underfilled with product, but they dump out the entire Charlotte Tilbury matte beauty blush wand and they weigh it and it is filled correctly. So if you get this, you use it, you squeeze out all the air and you're like, where's the product? Don't worry the perfect amount of product is there and it is still almost twice the amount of the Rare Beauty blushes. Okay, enough of that. I just wanted to add some context. These are so beautiful, but for me, they're shade specific. Pillow Talk is by far my favorite. It's the kind of mid-range in terms of pigmentation. Not too sheer, not too pigmented. I find that it blends like a dream. It's a super liquidy formula, but instead of one that just blends away the pigment and disappears or like spreads all over your face, there's still a little bit of like a moussey quality to it. So it has a little bit of body. And I find that it's really easy to use, super blendable, but you get enough time to work with it before it sets down that you can still blend it and you can add a second layer if you want to. But once this is on your face, it does not budge and it lasts an incredibly well amount of time. And for me on my skin, it's amazing. I never thought that I would find two cream blushes in the same month that would work so well for me. So for me, this one is an absolute win. The other shades I'm just so, so about, I'll show you the application of Pink Pop and it was way too sheer. It kind of leads me to wonder if maybe I got a bad batch because I think you can see in the clip, like it really did not show up on my skin. But if you are super, super pale or you really don't like heavy blush, then maybe this could be a good option for you. And also Pink Pop is incredibly peach. So I don't think they should have named it Pink Pop, which kind of annoyed me because I really love pink blush. I find that Charlotte Tilbury pink colors do tend to be very peachy, which is a bummer, but I'm sure some people really like this color. Then we have Peach Pop, which is more of like a bright orangey peach rather than just a peach. And it's fine. I think this is pretty similar to Pillow Talk in terms of pigmentation, maybe like a hair more pigment than Pillow Talk. I just don't personally like peaches or oranges on me. So for me, this color is a pass, but I think it would be beautiful for a lot of other people. And lastly, we have Dream Pop, which is this gorgeous, rich cherry red. And I think this would be really great, especially if you have more deeper, like medium to deep skin tone, because it's not going to be quite as stark and contrast on your skin. And so it won't look as patchy. Not that it's patchy on me, but it could be a little bit patchy if I don't perfectly blend it because it is so bright and so pigmented. So what I like to do with this, since it's a beautiful color, is I mix it with a little bit of a liquid highlighter and then I just get the perfect kind of flush of a cherry blush and it's really beautiful. And then my only con in general about these blushes really is that I don't like the packaging. You know, I've never liked the Charlotte Tilbury, what do you call it, sponges. I just don't think that they are particularly hygienic. Not that I'm really concerned about it, but I don't think that they do anything. And also this kind of packaging looks and feels really cheap for $42. And that's something I feel about Charlotte Tilbury in general. I think the prices are high, the product quality is great, but the packaging is really poor. So it kind of depends on your preference. And lastly, we have three new shades of the M Cosmetics So Soft Blush. This is an ultra soft blendable cream formula and they sent me the shades Demure, Chiffon, and Strawberry. These are $30 and the website says they're a soft blendable cream blush stick ranging from soft neutrals to rich vibrant hues infused with squalane and vitamin E for a creamy and luxurious texture that applies seamlessly creating a youthful and healthy complexion with a satin skin like finish. I was really excited to get these because I haven't tried the so soft blushes and I've heard really wonderful things about them. So I'm going to start with the shade Demure which is this beautiful beautiful kind of neutral, soft, pinky beige. It's like a little bit of a tan. It really blends in well with my skin tone. So I would say this one's probably my favorite. And I hope you can see in the application footage, it really does have this kind of cream to powder experience. Once you apply it on the skin, if you touch it, it feels like you're blending like a cream powder. It's such 
a luxurious feeling. And these are just the, one of the most blendable cream products I've ever tried. I love the natural skin-like finish that it isn't matte, but it isn't dewy. Unfortunately though, these really do not last on my skin. They faded away really quickly, but honestly, I think that's just a me problem. And if cream blush generally lasts well on you, then I would highly recommend these. They're super beautiful and so blendable and soft, just like the name suggests. Then I also got the shade Chiffon, which is a cool pink with lilac undertones. I love this color, but I do think it's a little bit too light or maybe a little too sheer for me. I feel like it kind of had a hard time showing up on camera, but sometimes it's hard for me to see what's going on in the monitor. So maybe it did show up and looked really nice. I do love this color. I'm totally a fan of these like cool toned pinks. I think they're really pretty. And then we have the shade Strawberry, which is just this epic mid-tone red with coral undertones. This is like the color of summer for me. I cannot wait to wear this on my cheeks and lips. I think it's just the most beautiful shade for warm weather. I do find that red blushes and red pigment tends to stain my skin, like with the Charlotte Tilbury Dream Pop blush with M Cosmetics Strawberry with a lot of other red blushes I've tried. I'm not sure why that is, but I think there's just something due to the nature of that kind of pigment that I felt like this one was a little bit more difficult to blend. I just felt like it was kind of staining my cheeks as I went, but it really wasn't a big deal and it was, you know, totally fine to work with and it blended out okay. It just wasn't quite as blendable to me as the other shades. But again, I think if you have a deeper skin tone than I have, that's probably not even gonna be an issue at all. I hope you enjoyed this roundup of a ton of new cheek products. Don't forget to check the description box and follow my Spotify playlist if you're a fan of new music. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.